a little bit more about me, me and Jordan, before I get going tonight. Many of you probably already know us, but we just celebrated our three-year wedding anniversary, which was super exciting. Thank you, thank you. And then if you have met us, you probably know this, but we have the sweetest little baby puppy. And let me just... Oh, he went away too far. Yeah, look at that. His name is Echo. He's the best. Um, if you want to enhance your life, he actually has an Instagram. So at Echo Thrash, if you just want to bring joy to your every day. All right? So, oh gosh, he's so cute. Okay, as we, as we kick off today, I have my Bible up here. Does anyone else have a Bible with them? Anybody? Yes. Yes, yes, very nicely done. Um, one thing I love is having a paper Bible. It just does not all the way compare to the digital one. So if you do want a Bible and you don't already have one, we can hook you up. So if you want to DM us on Instagram, if you want to talk to one of your leaders, we can get you set with a super cool Bible that you'll love and enjoy reading. And that's what I, what I love with mine. So kicking off into today's topic. A few weeks ago, we started our Mirror Mirror teaching series, and this has been all about the fruit of the Spirit. And I actually want to read from chapter 5 of the book of Galatians. So if you do have your Bible on your phone or in person, I'm going to be in Galatians 5. And it starts off with Paul talking about our Christian life. And this is what it says. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. For if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. And then it goes on to say, you are running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? It certainly isn't God, for he is the one who called you to freedom. So basically, this verse lays out that there is a battle going on inside us, right? There's one side, which is our sinful nature, things that we want to do, but we definitely know they don't really please God. So that's our sinful nature side. And then we have our Christian faith. So if you're a believer, we are promised that when we accept Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us and guides us in our everyday life to fight that daily battle against our, our sins, our desires, our flesh. Our Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our helper. And he helps us live according to what God wants for our lives. So this verse tells us that God wants freedom for us, but so often we kind of chain and enslave ourselves to our sinful nature, to things that really don't make us free. Because oftentimes we look at things that we would think of as freedom, but they really just trap us. The only person we can find true freedom in is Jesus. So how can we tell if the Holy Spirit is working in us right? If you're a believer, you're like, how can I really know that the Holy Spirit is? is working inside me. Well, for me, it's just like a tree. So I know absolutely nothing about plants. Um, every time Jordan brings me succulents, I end up killing them somehow. And so we have a rotation of plants in our home because I just do not get them at all. But I do get this. How do you know that an apple tree is an apple tree? Well, obviously, if it has apples on it, right? Even I can get that about plants. And it's the same way for us. How can we tell if the Holy Spirit is working in us? If we have that relationship with God, well, we'll be able to see the fruit, right? Other people will be able to see the fruit and know. I want to go ahead and read this next verse in Galatians 5. And this has kind of been our main verse for this teaching series. And it says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And then he goes on to list these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So if you are a believer 
these characteristics will be evident in your life. People should be able to tell that you're a person who has love, gentleness, faithfulness, all of these things. And of course, no one is perfect, right? But that's why we have the Holy Spirit working in us, making these fruits possible. And that connects to our main point for this series, which is just as a mirror reflects our appearance, right? The fruit of the Spirit reflects our faith. Pastor Chris, you guys probably know him, but he's our lead pastor here at Three Circle Church. And he says one thing that I love. He says, no fruit, no Jesus. So the fruit is an indicator if we have Jesus in our lives. And basically, if you don't have the fruit, you don't have Jesus. And I love that. It's such a good reminder. So, so far, we have learned about love the first week with Jordan. We have learned about joy and peace from Ben. And then last week, Jordan talked about patience and self-control, which are often two very hard ones, right? But tonight, I actually want to look at the fruit of the spirit of gentleness. So what exactly does gentleness mean in the Bible? Well, here's kind of a definition for you. Gentleness is humility, meekness. So most of you have probably heard being humble. It's the influence of the Holy Spirit in you, and it's the source of power in you, which is a really interesting one because for me, I've always thought of gentleness or being gentle as kind of a weakness sometimes. Like, it's not something I would necessarily want people to, you know, compliment me with when you think of gentleness. Like, words like, hey, you're, you're strong, you're capable, you're passionate, you're independent, right? All those things just have a slightly better ring to them than you're gentle. But this changes my perspective. Those words aren't opposites of the word gentle. They actually work really well together. So here's what I think of. Gentleness is basically like an elephant. And I will say, first off, that elephants are some of the cutest animals ever. Like, I love elephants, especially baby elephants. So here we go. This will bring you joy. Look at that. I know, I love it. Look at this guy. All right, and this one's my favorite. Isn't that perfect? Like, I identify. Like, I get what you're going through, bud. So baby elephants are super cute. And this is my normal Pinterest feed, by the way, just to give you some insight. Gives me all the feels. But elephants are often called the gentle giants, right? I've heard that termed for elephants. And I actually did a deep dive on Google all about elephants, okay? And I have a few tidbits for you. First of all, elephants are afraid of ants, which seems really strange because they're so big, obviously. Um, Google also said that Elephants are very intelligent. They're good listeners. They work well with people, so they're not normally very aggressive. And then one of the best things I heard is that scientists say that elephants are one of the most emotional animals. They're able to feel and show and express complex and deep emotions, which is pretty cool. It makes them even cuter, right? I love the elephant because it demonstrates some of these qualities of gentleness, but it in no way lacks strength. I mean, you can tell it by just looking at an elephant. Just because it's gentle, the elephant is incredibly strong in its gentleness. First off, they are by far the strongest land animal. They can lift up to 20,000 pounds, which is like one of those red buses that they have in London, which is crazy. So there's no lack of strength but it's also paired with this gentleness. Another way to describe gentleness is strength under control. Gentleness is strength under control. I love this because gentleness is often knowing the power that you have in a moment, but choosing humility instead. Choosing to put someone else above yourself. And, and that can be really hard for us to do right, especially when we're aware of the power we have. 
And I also love how all the, the fruit of the Spirit that we've been learning, out, they tie, learning about, they tie in together. For example, when you show gentleness, you're also showing the love of Christ in that moment. And when you put into practice self-control, you're able to be gentle, right? They all tie in. And of course, as he always is, Jesus is the best example of a person for us, for gentleness. I mean, he's the best example for anything that, that's good ever. So he is the best example of how to be gentle. And we can learn gentleness from him, especially by how he handles being in very difficult situations, because that's often when it's the most difficult to be gentle, right? So I want you to kind of imagine this scene with me. This is from the Bible, but they arrest Jesus, right? They take him to this big room that's kind of like a courtroom. It's crowded full of people, and he is in front of the leader who is named Pilate. And so this crowd is there, and they're shouting insults at him. They're slandering his name, his purpose. Um, they're pretty much falsely accusing him of all these things. Some even say that they spit on him. And for me in that moment, if, if I was Jesus, I would want to at least like get a word out to defend myself, right? I would want to kind of plead my case and and many of us would want to, you know, snap back at, at the people who were being so, so harshly to him. But this is what Jesus does, and this shows his strength under control. So Pilate, who's, who's the leader here, he asked Jesus, are you the king that you've been saying you are? And Jesus just says that, that he is, and that's all he has to say. I mean, like he's Jesus, so he literally could have called down all of the angels in heaven, all of the armies, and wiped out all these people in a second, right? He has true power and authority over this whole situation. But in gentleness and in humility, he knows what he has to do. And he remembers his purpose. He remembers that he is actually there for us, that he's, he's going to die for our sins very soon after. And he shows his strength under control by speaking the truth and by holding on to his purpose. So looking at the life of Jesus, how can, how can you and me be gentle? Like how can we display this fruit of the Spirit? And Paul actually helps us understand this. Paul is one of the writers in your Bible of the New Testament books. And he says this in Ephesians. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So he's pretty much saying to the, to the believers, hey, I'm encouraging you to act like Christians, to walk it out in your everyday life. And then he says this, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. So this is how we walk out our everyday Christian life, with humility and gentleness. So the first way, that we can display a gentleness is to love others more than yourself. And that's right off the bat uh, a pretty tough one. Like, I know I can say this about myself, that I can be very selfish, and a lot of us can, right? We all want what we want. We want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. So this can often be very difficult, but... You want to know a secret on how to do this? You practice. It's just like anything else. The Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit is inside you to help you. All you need to do is try and put this into practice. So this is like when your parents tell you to clean your room, but you're just about to go out with your friends, you put your parents first. You consider their needs above your own. Or this is like when all of your friends kind of get together and, and you're talking bad and gossiping about this one person and, and you really have some good tea that you could throw in the pot, you know. Um, but you put that person above your own wants and desires to gossip and you think about their heart and their feelings in that moment. 
you practice. And this is what Jesus did. He constantly put the needs of others above himself. I mean, I feel like dying for us, dying for people, even dying for those people who slandered him, I mean, that's the ultimate sign of putting another above yourself. But you can also see him do this all throughout his life. Have any of you guys read through some of the Gospels? That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, a few of you guys. So these books are all about the life of Jesus, and they give us a really good look at what his everyday life was like. And we see time and time again, story after story in his life of Jesus practicing this and putting other people before himself. He used every opportunity he had to love others. And if it's true for Jesus, then it is certainly true for us, right? To put this into practice, to love others more than ourselves. And in this way, we can be gentle. The next thing, we have to make make your relationship with God a priority. This is huge, to make your relationship with God a priority. This is how you live out gentleness. So let me paint this picture for you guys. Um, right now, I don't work out, okay? Um, like, I may go for a jog once or twice a week, but it's like, if I'm vibing it, you know, then I'll go for a jog. Um, and by jog, I mean like five to ten minutes, and then um, I'm a head out, you know? Like, I'm good at that point. And so, what if I told you, I come to you tonight, and I'm like, hey, so I just signed up for this triathlon and it's on Friday. So, okay, first of all, you would probably think, wow, like, I'm seriously concerned for her, her health. Like, I think she may die. And I would get that. And then number two, you would think that I have no foundation or groundwork laid for that kind of challenge, right? So can I, can I drop this truth on you guys? If you only talk to God when you need him or when you want something, you don't have a relationship with God. So I'm going to say that one more time. This is a big one. If you only talk to God when you need him or when you want something, you don't have a relationship with God. See, there's no foundation laid there. There's no groundwork. So when you do have something that comes up that, presses on your faith, that challenges what you believe, you don't really have anything to stand on in that moment. So if you've been in this teaching series and you're wondering why you struggle so much with the fruit of the Spirit, like maybe you say, well, I, I pray at church or I mean, I sometimes pray before I eat, but I'm still struggling with love. Or maybe you say, well, I, I kind of worship at church, or I'll hear a worship song in my car every now and then, but I still somehow struggle with joy. What's the problem here? Maybe you don't have a relationship with God, and that's the problem, right? Because our relationship with him has to be a daily relationship. It's just like becoming friends with someone, right? Right? You have to take the time into that friendship. You have to spend time with them. So you have to make your relationship with him a priority. And all it takes is trying. And so here's some super, super simple ways we can do this, guys. Because all you need to do is, is start small. You don't have to read the entire Bible next week, right? So one way is just to set a daily reminder on your phone, right? Put up a timer for five minutes and pray through that five minutes. That's all it takes. Start there every day. Or read a chapter of your Bible in the morning or before you go to bed. It doesn't matter where you start as long as you start. Or ask one of your small group leaders, hey, can you keep me accountable? Can you text me and remind me? Let them help you get connected and stay connected to God. They love that, and that's what they're here for. They're here to help you with that. The fruit of the Spirit, specifically gentleness and all of the fruit, come out of our relationship with God. 
So these things flow out of an already relationship with God. And that's why your relationship with God is so, so important. Because we can't face the world without him, right? Every day, like we talked about, is that battle within us between our sin, what we want, our selfish desires, our selfishness, and our Christian faith. It's a literal battle inside of us. I want to read something else from from Paul in the New Testament. It starts off like this. Now I, Paul, appeal to you with the blank of Christ, and we'll come back to this. We are not human, or sorry, we are human. (laughs) We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. So at the beginning of this verse, it's all about waging a spiritual battle, which is different than the physical battles we see in this world. And God's weapons, his ways, are often so different than what we would think they are. And I think at the beginning of this verse, it would say, I appeal to you with the power of Christ, or maybe with the authority of Christ, or the strength and battle of Christ, right, going into this. And it actually says this, appeal to you with the gentleness and kindness of Christ. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. So the truth is that gentleness is hard work. It's not what the world would do. It's not always what we would think to do. And it's probably not what those around you are pursuing, right? But the truth is, is this. Gentleness is a powerful weapon. Gentleness is a very powerful spiritual weapon. And it helps you fight the daily battles and sins that try to steal and diminish and devalue the faith that you have. The truth is this. The enemy has no foothold in your gentleness. And, and here's what I mean by that. See, there are so many things that the enemy can use against you, right? The enemy can use your anger against you. He can use your hatred against you. He can use your harsh words against you. And he can definitely use your pride against you, right? But the enemy has no place in your gentleness. He can't use your gentleness against you. You see, it's not easy to put respecting your parents over your desire to do what you want to do. It's not easy to hold your tongue when someone offends you, and it's not easy to put others above yourself. But this is what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to be gentle. And it's only by the Holy Spirit that we can be. And that's kind of a relief, that we can't do this by ourselves, period. But that's why we have the Holy Spirit. That's why he is such a gift to us. I want to read a final verse tonight, and this is, Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, and Jesus says this, and he's speaking this to you tonight too. It says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. And this is the character of Jesus. He is humble and gentle. See, no matter how hard we try to do things on our own, we're never going to really get anywhere. We'll just end up exhausted and worn out in our faith, and maybe even you'll get to the point where you say, I just can't do this anymore. But Jesus, in his gentleness, invites us to take his hand and let the Holy Spirit work in us. He offers rest from our own efforts for us trying and trying to do what's right. And all he wants is for us to just let him in. 
So tonight, I want you to really focus in. And I want you to just ask him to help you. Where are you struggling with gentleness? Where do you need to step out and be more gentle in a situation or with a particular person? Who is God showing you tonight? And I think one of the most important things is where do you need to let the Holy Spirit take lead in your life? What have you been holding back from him? Because I know we all have something. And I'm sure you can can think of something when asked that question. You know what you're holding back. See, we all have things that we we hold on to with this tight fist and we say, not this, God. I, I have this covered. Or we say, well, it doesn't really matter if I do this because God won't really mind. Or maybe we are in denial, right? We know deep down that this is a little sketchy. This is probably not what God would want for me, but I'm not even... I'm not even going to go there or think about it. Then I don't, then I don't have to, to think about giving it up. But I, I invite you to give whatever it is over tonight. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. If it's your first time accepting Christ, do that with all sincerity, seriousness tonight invite the Holy Spirit in and if you're you're already a believer and you have the Holy Spirit I encourage you to invite him to work in you to surrender those things over to him that you have been holding back so I'd like to pray for us tonight let's bow our heads together Jesus we thank you that you are our ultimate example now and always for how to live and God we want to thank you for the Holy Spirit thank you for helping us thank you for fighting our battles and we just ask tonight Lord that you would help us through your Holy Spirit to produce this fruit of gentleness in our lives that those around us would see it that we would see it that we would be intentional about putting others first and about making our relationship with you a true priority in our life. And God, we just ask that you would help us to let it go. You know what it is. You know every piece of our hearts and our minds. And you know what we're holding on to. And so we ask that tonight would be the night that we wouldn't wait that we would surrender everything to you. God, we ask that you would do a work in us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.